What differences do you have, if any, for calculating intrinsic value versus what was said in security analysis? And for example, how does management factor into that? Graham didn't get too specific about intrinsic value in terms of precise calculations, but intrinsic value has come to be equated with, and I think quite properly, with what you might call private business value. Now, I'm not sure who was the first one that came up with it, but, well, the first one that came up with it was ESOP, actually, but uh, the intrinsic value of any, any business, if you could foresee the future perfectly, is the pr present value of all cash that will be ever distributed for that business between now and Judgment Day. And we're not perfect at estimating that, obviously. Uh, but that, that is, that's what an investment or a business is all about. You put money in and you take money out. Aesop said a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Now, he said that around 600 BC or something like that. But that hasn't been improved on very much by, by the business professors now. Uh, now, the question is, is, you know, how sure are you that there are two in the bush? You know, how far away is the bush? There are all kinds of things. What are interest rates? But, I mean, Aesop wanted to leave us something to play with over the next couple thousand years, so he didn't spell the whole thing out. But that's, that's what intrinsic, intrinsic value essentially is. It's, and and uh, we don't, Graham would say that, Phil Fisher would say that, Phil Fisher would say that in calculating that, he would want to look a lot harder at the qualitative factors of the business in making that estimate of how many birds were in the bush. Uh, Graham would say he would want to see the bush, you know, two dollars worth of cash in the bush, you know, and to pay a dollar for it now. And uh, it, one emphasized quantitative factors and one emphasized qualitative factors, but neither one would have disagreed with the math. And I started out very influenced by Graham, so I emphasized quantitative factors. Charlie came along and said I was all wrong and that he'd learned more in law than I'd learned in financial <laughs> studies and everything, and that I should think more about qualitative factors, and he was right. And Phil Fisher said the same thing. Uh, but that's, that's what intrinsic value is about. You know, if, if you buy a McDonald's franchise, if you, if you buy General Motors, whatever it may be, the real question is, A, are you gonna to have to put more cash into it after you buy it? But it's really cash in, cash out, when, what discount rate, all the standard stuff. It, uh, in terms of, a, if I had a silver bullet, what company would I shoot as being a threat to us? I don't really, I don't see any competitor to Berkshire. I see, I see private equity buying lots of businesses and having an advantage in that they'll leverage up when we won't and also that, that uh, presently, they can borrow money very cheap and all of that. So, I mean, there are, other, there are always going to be people, people competing with us to buy businesses, but which is our main business, main ac occupation for me and Charlie. Uh, but I don't, I don't see anybody that's got a model or trying to buy, build a model that will essentially uh, go after what we're trying to achieve, which is to buy wonderful businesses from people that care about where their business goes and who generally want to keep on running them. Charlie? Well, as I said earlier, I think the Berkshire model as now constructed will have what they said in show business was legs. It will go a long time. And I think it will be quite credible. And I think it has enough advantage that it will just keep going a long time. And I don't, I think most big businesses don't. If you stop to think about it, all the great big businesses of yesteryear, how few of them have really gotten big and stayed big.